Welcome at the Candidates 2024 Bot Edition Round number 7 Where the bots of the candidates battle it out For the one and only spot to in the end challenge The world champion Ding Luren for the world championship Let's see how Arbasoft bot and Vidit bot battle it out In the first game of round number 7 E4, E6 Going into a French defense We haven't seen it often in this tournament so far so clearly fitted and abasov switching it up knight to c3 and we've seen this kind of position so often e takes going into an exchange variation of the french defense and here knight takes mm, often you take back with the pawn but knight takes is also possible bishop to d3 and c5 here the knight goes to f3 the other knight to c6 of course attacking this pawn now two times White needs to act and therefore takes the knight on d5. Here, Fidel takes back with the queen and the move c4 is strong because perhaps you can move forward with this pawn. Going back would have been best, but Fidel decided to go to this side of the board, making sure that the queen perhaps can join the attack on the king perhaps later on. Here, the move d5 would simply lose a pawn after takes. You cannot really take it back because then you can simply take with the queen and there's no good discovery on the king and that's why Abasov took the pawn on c5 and here the bishop has a good developing move taking the pawn and has a great diagonal here a very even game so far castles castles knight to g5 question mark this knight wants to come here but black can prevent it with f5 at some point takes takes and here indeed f5 great move by Vidit. This knight has now lost a move and will not ever go here. Probably has to go back. And that's what he should have done instead. Bishop to e3. Bishop to e7. Attacking the knight. The best move played by Abasov. f4. Protecting this knight. If takes, then you simply take back. But this gives also a nice opportunity for Vidit to break the center. That's what he does. And now there's quite a lot of moves you can play. But Abasov made a big blunder. He took the e5 pawn and simply forgets that this knight is only being protected by the bishop. And can you detract the defender of the knight with one move? Yes. f4. Abasov overlooked a simple tactic. Now you have to take here. Takes. You take the knight. The rook takes here. And you take the knight. And in the end, this pawn will be protected by the bishop. While this pawn is super weak. Check. King goes back to g8 and now yeah you simply defend this pawn and black has a plus four score on the board bishop e4 knight takes on e5 great knight look how strong it is and yeah this pawn cannot go forward and you cannot develop here but there's other ways to develop your pieces with a5 for example here and your rook will come in through a6 b3 and c the rook joins the party. h3. Rook to d6. Getting active. Perhaps going here and entering white's camp on the second row. Bishop d5's check. Bishop in between. And yes, if you would take the pawn here, well, bishop f5 would be a really good move. Because where does your rook go to? Do you have any good squares for your rook? Not really. If you would go here, for example, then rook to d2. And if takes, takes, yeah, this pawn will simply promote so therefore abasov takes the bishop takes back this pawn is still protected by black's bishop and now abasov moved in his rooks but knight here to kick away the rook abasov didn't even try to go away because then the pawn will simply start progressing g3 you take the rook and in this position abasov resigned horrible game for him and such an easy win for Vidit. Then moving to the second game of round number seven. And remember, round number seven is the last round before the big break. And after that, the players will play each other again, but then with the opposite colors than the first time. C4, English opening, G6, D4, Knight to F6, entering a King's India defense. Knight C3, Bishop to G7, and E4. We've seen this King's Indian defense already so many times. Well, nowadays is not being played as much anymore very surprising d6 very common in these kind of positions knight to f3 castles bishop to e2 knight to a6 all very standard moves 
castles e5 yeah indeed in the king's engine you either break with the e5 or the c5 pawn sooner or later e5 good move d takes d takes and will you take here or will white take there always make sure to do it on your own terms bishop to e3 and both don't want to trade it and queen to e7 knight to d5 having this great outpost over here best would have been to go back to d8 and after a move like queen c2 where you want to bring in the rook to set up some x-ray you bring in the knight to trade off the bishop therefore you have to go back to d2 for example and now c6 is a good move and black has a quite comfortable position after knight c3 but after the move knight takes white has a great center and look at these bishops wow they're so strong and these pawns will likely join the attack at some point b6 perhaps developing the bishop now rook c1 Firuja eyeing on the weak c7 square knight goes here queen c2 f5 here best would have been to simply take the knight and if you take back take back you take another time and in the end you take this pawn and yes black can take this pawn but after knight to g5 you will simply win back this pawn because you cannot protect it okay you can protect it with the bishop but then this pawn also hangs instead Fruja plays the move e takes f5 takes back with the bishop and now you lose a tempo because of this okay but still slightly better queen c4 queen to d6 not a good move because you simply underestimate white's chances the better move would have been king to h8 to get away from the x-ray attack over here and with the screen of course you also prevent this pawn from moving forward but the queen is not a good defender because you can easily attack it before kicking away the knight goes to the center of the board and here knight to h4 attacking this quite strong bishop knight to f6 and here white takes this strong bishop of course takes back and here in the end this pawn is hanging because it's being attacked by the queen and the rook can only defend it once and there's cook catcher's camp rook goes to d8 and another pawn falls and Furuja is already two pawns up but perhaps some counterplay with the f pawn later on and here Gukesh takes the pawn on d5 which was somewhat of a po poison pawn because bishop c4 pinning the knight to the queen after a move like king h8 the rook will come in and now you pin the knight to the queen instead Gukesh plays queen to e6 also pinning now the knight to the queen and also the king never do that at home that's also why the other pawn hangs Kukuk attacking this rook now the rook comes forward to a5 attacking this knight another time here the king moves aside and now bishop to c5 attacking this rook and making room also for the pawns to move forward at some point rook f to d8 the other rook joins the party still pinning this knight so many times bishop f6 queen to a6 going for the queen trade not accepted with queen to f7 a4 finally start moving these pawns forward bishop to g5 attacking this rook you have to act rook to a1 king g7 a5 finally f pawn starts moving as well to create some counterplay queen to c3 after some shuffling here the bishops are traded and see that this pin is still alive queen to b3 strengthening this pin even further with the queen now also behind it the rook has to defend and now after b5 yeah you don't have a lot of defenders left because you are already defending this knight all the time f3 you simply take it and here you trade off some pieces yeah and after the move b6 Kukesh resigned because Firuja will simply promote one of the two pawns sooner or later a big win for Firuja ensuring himself another round of being first that's for sure then moving to another tense game of this round Caruana bot against Pragnananda bot let's see what they did d4 d5 c4 and moving into a slav defense 
bishop to g4, pinning the knight to the queen, takes, takes, and knight to c3. Knight to c6, and the queen goes in on b3. In this kind of position, it's all about the light square bishop. Prague already managed to develop it, so often by plays against the development of this bishop, but here, queen to d6, a big plunder by Prague. Better would have been to retreat the bishop. That's also what Karana was playing against. And then bishop to d3. But if you don't do that and you play queen to d6, you are very vulnerable. And here you could, for example, already take this pawn and white is at least a pawn up. But that's not what Karana did. Knight to e5, bring the knight into a strong square in the center of the board. Here, bishop to c8, but now it's a little too late. Better would have been bishop to d7, protecting this knight. And what after takes? Well, after takes, you take back, and if you take with the queen, now the white queen comes in and your king is quite vulnerable. So bishop to c8, now bringing the other bishop into the game, pinning the knight to the king, e6, and castles, and here bishop e7, a big blunder by Prague, making already quite some mistakes in the opening. On the highest level, we, do we don't see this often. Bishop to d7 would be better. After bishop takes, bishop takes, and bishop d2, you simply keep on developing, and white is somewhat better. But after the move bishop to e7, e4 is the key blow in this position. Because after d takes, the bishop joins the party, x-raying on this queen. And perhaps this knight will come in here, protecting the, this bishop and attacking the rook. And you cannot really take here, because then you would take here, and after takes, your rook hangs in the end. So Prague played bishop to d7, protecting this knight, and here Karana played knight takes on c6. Better would have been bishop takes on c6, and when the bishop takes back, here knight to b5 would have been, would have been super strong. If you take it with the bishop attacking this rook, you simply take the bishop with a check, and after knight to d7, you have a strong move here, knight to g6, attacking the queen and the rook at the same time. Not played. Instead, Caruana goes knight to c6. And here you can take the bishop, which also Prague did. And after the knight takes e7, well, then you have to see the right move in this position. And the right move is queen to d6. And after d5, well, you take this knight with your queen, still ensuring that you can castle sooner or later. Because after takes, takes, bishop takes, you can take with the knight. Or even with the queen. But that's not what Prague did and makes a big mistake here. You can now take the bishop if you take it back. And here he takes back. And this queen will come in. And where is this king going to be safe sooner or later? d5, opening up the position for the rooks as well. Prague moves in the rook as a defender, takes, takes back. And look at these double pawns in the center. Super weak. Where is this king going to hide? The rook attacking already the vulnerability. Rook a b8. And do you see the brilliant move in this position? Well, you simply take this pawn. If you take it back with the knight, well, then you have queen a4 check. b5. And now you don't take the knight because then you enter an endgame. And that's not what you want because you both have five pawns. But instead you play queen d4 check, the king goes aside, and now you take with the rook, making sure that you will keep black's weaknesses. You win a pawn over here sooner or later. And now you attack this pawn, but also this pawn. So you will win a pawn, and the king is still very weak over here. And that's what proc saw. Proc played the move. Rook to c6, Caruana takes the knight, good move, takes back with the queen. If you take back with the pawn, well, then you have queen d3 check, and after king to c7, and whatever white plays, you will win this pawn. So, queen takes, queen a4, doubling up the rooks, and here rook to e2. Not the best move. Instead, Caruana should have simply taken on a7. But after rook e2, 
there's the option to go a6, saving your pawn. That's not what Prague did. And Prague went king to c7, trying to get away. But yeah, this pawn simply hangs. Bad move. Rook d8. Rook e4. Giving up a pawn on b2, but getting extra activity with the rook. Queen to a5 check. Queen in between. Another check. And now this pawn is being attacked. Rook h4. Also eyeing this pawn. Now both pawns are being attacked. King goes back. You slide in the rook. Check. But Caruana is not after this pawns yet. He will first make sure that his pieces are active. And secondly, that he will not get back rank checkmated. So he plays a move h3. Queen to a6. And bring in the other rook. Doubling up the rooks. Always strong. And remember, this rook is now pinned by the king. And that's what Prague sidesteps with king to a7. King to h2. And here, rook to d1. Better would have been to bring in the rook to d2. Attacking the pawns on the second row. Not played. Rook to d1. Now, moving in the f pawn. Takes, takes. And the move g6. Rook to c7. Attacking this pawn and also this pawn. And here, Prague should have simply taken this pawn and going for a run with this pawn sooner or later, which is difficult, but instead he goes for the trade of queens. And that is the wrong idea because this is simply a losing position and simplify it too much. Here you protect your pawn and yet this pawn falls, but your pawns will move rather fast. Rook here and you will gobble up some pawns on this side of the board. check and then we end in this position where this pawn is being pinned on the king and these pawns are free to run and this is simply winning and that's why Prague resigned and Caruana also joins the leaders of this round then the last game of round seven Nakamura bot against Nepo bot Nakamura on four points Nepo on three and a half points it's a very important game for both of them d4 knight of six Going into the Verisov attack. Not played very often in these kind of games as well. F3. You want to push this pawn forward. It's very thematical in the Verisov. Knight to c6. Not the best move. Better would have been to go knight here. And then at some point you will go e6. c6. And attack with these pawns. Knight to c6. Giving up the center, because now white will get the center, takes, and you don't take back. Here, the best move would have been to play d5 right away. The knight has to come back, and the queen comes in at d4. And if you, for example, take, you castle long, and you have a great position here with the queen in the game, the rook into the game, the bishop will join the party, the knight is good, the bishop is good, great position for white. Instead, Bishop b5 played, pinning the knight to the king, but giving away the advantage. a6, the best move in the position. Then, bishop takes and pawn takes. And yes, black has two double pawns here, but you also gave up your bishop pair. And that's what Nakamura continues to do, giving up his bishop pair, but getting a good center in return. Bishop has to move, of course, this time to e6. And Nakamura brings in his other knight. Bishop to d6. And here Nakamura castles, bringing his, game in, bringing his king into safety. And Napo decides to do the same. Knight f4. Attacking one side of the bishop pair. And if you would trade the knight, then of course you would also lose your bishop pair. But bishop c4 is a good move. Attacking the rook. And now the rook has to decide what to do. It stays there because of knight d3 getting in the way of the attack on the rook. c5, trying to destabilize Nakamura's center. Here the move d5, moving forward, getting a good center. But here, bishop Nakamura decides to take with the pawn. Bishop to e5, a good square, perhaps it will also come to d4. g3, because at some point the queen will join the party and aiming on the h2 square. And that's exactly what happened now. And here... Napo clearly had enough of this game. And after rook c1, 
Nepo took his opportunity, although he is slightly better, 0.7 given by the computer. He could have gone g6, for example, but he knows he's playing Nakamura and he decides to go for the fourth draw, takes a pawn, and the queen takes back. And after a repetition of moves, the players decided to draw the game. And that concludes round seven and also the first half of the tournament. We have two players on five points. Garwana and Ferruja. Then Nakamura trailing right behind. Half a point behind them. Four and a half points. Still in the position to win this tournament. Then we have Napo on four points. Gukesh on three. And Prague on two and a half. And last, Abasov still on one point. Is he able to win some more games? Stay tuned for the second half of this tournament. And round number eight coming up.